Warning, do not use whiskey as actual mouthwash. Your boss and the police will not believe you. This is purely for science. Which is better, whiskey or mouthwash? Context, which is a better mouth cleanser, whiskey or mouthwash? Ever since my last video where I tested out hydrogen peroxide and mouthwash, I've been thinking of different things to test against mouthwash to see what could potentially perform better. And so today I thought I'd try out whiskey. Hear me out, I do have some good reasons. Most mouthwash is about 20% alcohol by volume, whereas most whiskey is about 40%. So I am curious to see if an increase in alcohol content does contribute to a reduction in bacteria. But that's not the only reason why I chose whiskey. In my previous video where I tested out hydrogen peroxide and mouthwash, by the way, if you haven't seen that video, I suggest you do watch it. The results are very shocking. I mentioned how mouthwash has these active ingredients that are antibacterial that are added to it. These specific agents are eucalyptol, menthol, methyl salicylate, and thymol. So you might say, well, sure, the mouthwash only has 20% alcohol, but it does have these other active ingredients that are antibacterial that do improve its performance. But here's the thing. Whiskey has hundreds, if not thousands, of different kinds of antibacterial agents that are added to it in the process of how whiskey is made, which I'll explain right now. The first and most important part of whiskey is the alcohol. Alcohol is made when yeast eat a carbohydrate source. For whiskey, this carbohydrate could be corn, rye, barley, or wheat. As the yeast consume the carbohydrate source, they release alcohol as a waste product. The alcohol is then distilled for purification and stored inside oak barrels for aging. So as the whiskey is sitting in these oak barrels for several days, weeks, months, or years, it extracts all kinds of molecules from the oak wood, which give whiskey its distinct brown color and oaky taste. Mmm, oaky taste. It turns out a lot of these molecules are nonpolar. We're talking aldehydes, phenols, ketones, and by nature, most nonpolar molecules are antibacterial. This is because they can break down the cell membrane of the bacterial cell. So really, it's like a clash of the titans. On one end, we have a solution of 20% alcohol, which has these active ingredients, which are proven to be antibacterial, and it's lab tested, and it's very good. On the other hand, we have a solution that is double the alcohol concentration and has hundreds, maybe thousands of different kinds of antibacterial agents. So what's gonna win? My thought is the whiskey will outperform the mouthwash. Here's the experiment. I brush my teeth for two minutes to remove as much bacteria as possible, to have a clean slate for growing new bacteria. To create an environment to grow bacteria, I ate a four gram piece of chocolate and let the bacteria grow for two hours. I did not eat anything else during these two hours, nor did I brush my teeth or use mouthwash. After two hours, the tested antibacterial agent, in this case, both mouthwash and whiskey was gargled for 30 seconds. A sample was taken from my upper and lower teeth using two separate sterilized cotton swabs. Triptych soy agar plates were allowed to come to room temperature for one hour prior to sample collection. Samples were smeared onto the plates in two distinct patterns and labeled to keep orientation. Plates were wrapped in parafilm and stored at 95 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours. Here's the results. This is the control plate and the whiskey plate. Whiskey makes a pretty good substitute mouthwash, which I attribute to the 40% alcohol and aromatic molecules from the oak wood. Here's the control plate and the mouthwash plate. As expected, the mouthwash cleaned house in reducing bacteria. Finally, here's the mouthwash and whiskey plates together. So the mouthwash did reduce more bacteria than the whiskey, but it was fairly close. Mouthwash again proves to be the superior product. My thought as to why is because there's probably higher concentrations of the active ingredients in the mouthwash as opposed to the whiskey, which although it has more in number, they're probably in trace amounts. This goes to show that a significant increase in alcohol doesn't necessarily mean you have a better mouthwash. It's these active ingredients that get the job done. Okay, so this is a great lesson in science. Just because you think your theory is correct and you have a rock solid foundation does not mean it's going to work. You don't know how it's gonna turn out until you actually test it. And I thought whiskey had all the components, all the great stuff to make it better, and it did not perform better. And just for curiosity, I tested out beer as well, so here's the results. The beer I used had an alcohol concentration of 5%. And as you can see, beer is not a good mouthwash. All right, so um, that's the video for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for future videos or experiments you'd like to test it out, just post in the comments below. And uh, if you want to help support my channel in future experiments, I do have a Patreon below as well. That would be greatly appreciated. Until next time, don't forget to ask questions. That's how you learn.